first chapter, 2 Timothy chapter 1. Here's a man who's facing death. And what does he talk about? The promise of eternal life. And then he says in verse 2, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. Verse 3, he says, I thank God whom I serve with a pure conscience. Talking about himself. And he says, I served God with a pure He says, I call to remembrance the genuine faith that was in you, that is in you, which was first in your grandmother, Lois. Then it was in your mother, Eunice. And it is now in you also. That's so beautiful. The passing on of spiritual heritage. This is the desire of God's heart. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. How do you and I stir up the gifts? Of course, one, when you're talking about spiritual gifts, you spend time in worship, you spend time in prayer, you spend time in the word. Uh, you spend time around people who would encourage that gift. Uh, and uh, also, most importantly, use the gift. Paul reminds him in verse 7, Timothy, you need to use the gift of God because... God has not given us a spirit of fear. But he's given us the Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. The word sound mind there literally means self-control, self-governing ability. So this is used in the context of gifts. So the gift of God must be exercised by the power of God, in the love of God, and with self-control. Given the fact that God has not given us fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind, he says, you know, don't be ashamed of testifying for Jesus. We have been saved, but we're also called. And this call is a holy calling. It's a call to a life of holiness and godliness and moral purity. It's a holy calling. It's not according to what we've done or the life we lived or how good we've been, but according to his own purpose and grace. That's been given to us. So think about this. Call, purpose, grace. God always calls us to a purpose. And he also gives us the grace to fulfill that purpose. So Jesus came. He is our savior. He saved us. He's abolished death. He's brought death to cease. And he's given us life and immortality. Once again, Paul affirming this truth, knowing that he's going to die. And saying, Jesus is my savior. I have life. I have immortality through the gospel. But he says, even though I'm suffering, I'm, I've been humiliated. He says, I am not ashamed. The one whom I have believed. He is the one who's given me the promise of life. He is Jesus Christ, the savior. He is the source of grace, mercy, and peace. He is the one who's abolished death and he's given life and immortality. I know whom I have. In whose hands have you placed your eternity, your present and your future? Paul says, I know whom I believe. And I know he is able to keep what I've committed to him until that day. So he tells Timothy, Timothy, I want you to hold on to sound words. The what I've taught you, hold on to it. Stay with the teaching of scripture. Stay with the word of God. And then he says in verse 14, Timothy the good thing which I've committed to you, which was committed to you, you keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. What has been given to you, you guard, you preserve with the help of the Holy Spirit. But then in verse 16 through 18, he mentions about a man named Onesiphorus. He says, Timothy, this man Onesiphorus, he's been such a good man. When I was in Ephesus, he came and took care of me. And when I came to Rome... He came all the way to Rome searching for me. Paul says he ministered to me. He refreshed me. And he says he was not ashamed of my chains. A key thing that I'd like us to take away from this chapter is simply this. Don't be ashamed. Paul tells Timothy. Timothy. This is in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 8. He says do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. Don't be ashamed Timothy. Of Jesus Christ and of associating yourself with true men and women of God.